we have talked about the bookstore application that we are going to build and we talked about what is a microservices architecture and how it is different from monolithic architecture and what are the pros and cons of each of those approaches so finally we are going to start building our first microservice catalog service in this video we are going to set up our catalog service and we are going to uh, configure everything that is required for building our microservice but we are not going to directly build our APIs right away in this video but we are going to uh, configure everything that is required so typically this is called a walking skeleton which means you have everything uh, you need for building the application but the main functionality is yet to be built so we are going to set up a catalog service and this is a very important step because the, as this is the first service that we are going to build we are going to uh, configure a few things which are going to common for other services as well so please uh, follow it through and don't skip it i have created a repository in my github account called a spring boot microservices course right now there isn't much we have a readme file with all the project related information and usually while building our products in uh, real world projects we typically use uh, tools like jira or trello board or something like that to keep track of what are the features that we are going to build and then uh, work accordingly so i would like to follow in the similar fashion uh, personally i prefer to uh, make a note of what are the tasks we need to do and then break down each task into sub tasks so it will help me to keep track of our progress and also identify the sub task dependency sometimes one task needs to be uh, divided into multiple sub tasks and we need to identify what is the first sub task we need to do and then what is the second one so if you note it down it will become more and more clear so that is what i am going to do in this series also and uh, github provides a facility called projects if you log in into uh, your github uh, profile you can see this projects option here so if you click on this there is an option to create a new project and if you click on new project it will show various uh, templates here and uh, for us i think kanban board uh, makes sense so i have selected uh, kanban board so let us uh, take a look at what is there in in the uh, current kanban board here so i have created few cards uh, that are uh, related to uh, catalog service building and we are going to pick up one card after another and then gradually build our application so here right now i have created only cards that are related to catalog service only but going forward i'll be creating similar cards for other services as well so right now uh, there is a card for creating a root maven project and then uh, there is a card for catalog service walking skeleton so in this current video we are going to implement these two uh, cards and in the upcoming video we are going to build the apis and then in another video finally we are going to dockerize our catalog service application so let's uh, start with creating our root maven project let us start with the first card here so this card has uh, two sub tasks one is to create a root maven project with uh, so and so um, maven coordinates and then create dot stk man rc file so first let us uh, create a root maven project with these coordinates so in the project root directory i am creating palm.xml file and i have set the same group id artifact id and uh, set the packaging type to palm because it is a root module and it is going to have uh, child modules and also i configured java version to use uh, 21 and then set the compiler level accordingly so that is our first task and what about the second create dot stk man rc file so what exactly is dot stk man rc file if you remember uh, in the previous video when i talk about we are going to use java 21 and i recommended using stk man for that so basically stk man is a uh, tool that you can use to install different versions of jdk and not only jdk's you can also install uh, maven gradle and other tools as well so if you are using linux or mac os you can directly install this 
uh, SDK using this command or if you are on Windows probably you can use WSL and install SDK man. So once you install SDK man you can take a look at what are all the uh, JDKs that are supported by SDK man. So you can run SDK list Java that will show different vendors and what are all the JDK versions are supported by that particular vendor. So usually I either use uh, JDKs from Temurin or from Zulu. So you can select these uh, JDK version IDs and then you can install whichever version you want to uh, install. So for example, I already installed uh, this 2102 Temurin. So if you want to install any um, Java version, what you can do, you can run command like this, stk install Java and specify the version ID. So it is going to download that particular version of JDK and then automatically install and it will ask you whether uh, you want to set it as a default or not. So once you install this, you can use that version uh, in your projects. So when you install JDK, uh, when you install SDK man, it will automatically create a configuration file in the location of uh, your home directory slash dot SDK man slash etc slash config file. So in that config file, there is a property called dot, uh, sorry, SDK man auto env. By default, it is set to false. But if you change it to true, we can uh, we can uh, automatically enable certain versions based on the dot stk man rc file. So right now I changed it to true. After that, we already have dot stk man rc file and I set Java version to 2101 Temurin and Maven version to 396. So what happens uh, by having this file? Whenever I cd into that particular directory, those versions will be automatically gets enabled. For example, so right now I have Java version as 21, right? Because I have specified Java version 2 like this. Suppose if I change it to 17.08, which is already installed. So now if I cd back, And then if I try to cd uh, into uh, same directory again, it will automatically uh, see that dot stk man rc file and then enable those specific versions for this particular shell. So by enabling this auto en environment to true and then having that dot stk man rc file uh, simplifies enabling certain versions of tools in a, a particular project. So I would recommend to uh, use this facility and uh, which enables you to seamlessly switch between different versions based on the project that you are working with. So this is why we have .stk man RC file here. While using build tools like Maven or Gradle, one common best practice is to use Maven wrapper or Gradle wrappers so that anybody who wants to work with the projects, they don't need to pre-install Maven or Gradle. They can directly use the uh, wrappers and then run any Maven command or Gradle commands. So let us see how we can uh, set up wrappers. So with Maven, we can simply run wrapper colon wrapper command it will automatically download the wrapper distribution and copy it into your uh, project directory. So here we can see there is a dot .mvn folder within that there is a wrapper and uh, there are uh, wrapper files and also you have uh, mvnw, mvnws.cmd. So if you want to run any uh, project related command using Maven, you can simply use the wrapper mvnw clean package. So it is going to use the wrappers and then uh, run the particular Maven command here. We are done with the first card. So let us start with second card. This is for creating catalog service walking skeleton. So here we need to create a new Spring Boot application with the name catalog service and uh, by selecting all these dependencies. So I went to start.spring.io and then I have provided the project metadata like artifact ID is catalog service and then package name is com.civalapps.bookstore.catalog and I have selected the Java version as 21 and I have selected web 
because we are going to build RESTful APIs and I have selected validation because we are going to perform some bean validation. Uh, we are going to use Spring Data GPA with PostgreSQL database and Flyway for database migrations. And we are going to monitor using Actuator and Prometheus. And we have selected test containers for our testing. And there is a dev tools and configuration process. These help in uh, during the development time. So I am going to generate the project with this um, criteria and I'm going to copy the generated project into our project. Let me add the catalog service module into our parent form. So here I have added catalog service as a module. So now IntelliJ IDEA identify this as a Maven module. Now let us quickly take a look at what is already there in the generated application. So here based on the uh, dependencies that we have added while generating this application, all these dependencies are already added. So now let us take a look at the code. So under SRC main Java, there is main entry point class here which we usually uh, run to start the application and under SRC test uh, uh, SRC main resources there is application.properties file which contains only application name automatically configured there are no db migrations yet and under SRC test java usually whenever we generate a spring boot application from spring initializer a, an integration test is created which just checks whether the uh, context can be loaded or not and while generating the application we have added test containers as well so from spring boot 3.1.0 uh, they have added support for test containers which not only can be used for writing test we can also use it for local development as well so if you want to learn how uh, test containers helps for running the local application so I have already made a video on uh, Spring Boot 3.1.0 test container service connections and local development support. So uh, I will add this link in the video description so you can uh, take a look at it. So basically what uh, test container support does is, so this is the class that is automatically added when you add test containers and any of the supporting uh, technologies. For example, we have added Spring Data JPA and Postgres con container. We have added Postgres uh, dependency. So when you add Postgres, it will automatically configure this PostgreSQL container. This is coming from test containers as a bin and added this at service connection. So basically, if you run this class instead of the catalog service application, if you run this, it will automatically spin up a PostgreSQL database container as a Docker container and your application will be configured to talk to this Postgres instance. So if you are depending on any external services like databases or RabbitMQ, you can configure those containers as beams. And if you simply run this, it will automatically start uh, all the dependencies and the application also. So it will simplify uh, running the application locally very much. So when we generate this code, by default, they use the latest uh, tag, but it is not a good practice to use latest. Instead, you should uh, explicitly specify which version of Postgres uh, container you want to use. So I changed it to 16 Alpine. So now what we can do, uh, I'm I'm going to add few properties here. So instead of uh, running on 8080, I want to run catalog service on port 8081. And server shutdown mode, instead of immediate, I want to uh, go for a graceful shutdown, which gives some uh, time to uh, complete the existing processes. So right now with this process, let us uh, start this application and see. So to check currently, currently I'm running a portainer container. Um, so that's what I'm seeing here when I run uh, Docker PS. But now I am starting this application using test catalog service application. Uh, remember this, if you run main method, which is there under SRC main Java, it is not going to automatically start these containers. Instead, if you run uh, this uh, application class, under SRC test Java, 
which is test catalog service application it is going to uh, start uh, this container and uh, automatically configure our application so now the application is started and i am going to access the actuator endpoints here so by default actuator uh, is enabled and actuator health endpoint only exposed by default so for now let us expose all the AP, uh, actuator endpoints so by using this property management dot endpoint start web exposure includes star this exposes all the ap endpoints of actuator so let us restart our application So earlier, when I mentioned uh, Docker PS, only Portainer container is running. Now we started the application. If we check, we can see uh, there is a PostgreSQL container running and uh, test containers, root container is running. So whenever I stop the application, it is going to uh, remove this PostgreSQL container automatically. We don't need to explicitly remove it. So now if we take a look at actuator endpoint, so there are a lot more actuator endpoints are exposed and right now if you go for info there is no information is uh, exposed so let us uh, fix this one if you check the spring boot reference documentation there is this generate build information section where if we add this build info executions to our spring boot maven plugin let us uh, first add to our catalog service here it is going to add the build information which we'll see uh, in a bit and also there is another plugin that we can use uh, git commit id maven plugin this will pull all the git information uh, regarding our uh, repository and then it will generate a, a git properties which will be included in the information uh, actuator endpoint so let let us add this plugin so with this plugin added now let us run the package go now if we take a look at under target classes so our uh, code goes into uh, this com um, com dot civilabs package and everything and then uh, there is a git.properties file which contains all the information about the uh, our current repository. So here you can see which branch we are currently working on and who is the uh, user uh, committed uh, last time and what is the commit uh, hash. So all these details are there. And also if you take a look at uh, inside meta inf there is a build info.properties. So here you can see uh, our build information what is the uh, maven artifact id and group id so when uh, this artifact is is built so all this information is there now if you start the application you can see all this build information plus git information as part of our info actuator endpoint so here you can see uh, build information and branch uh, commit id uh, details so you can actually customize this a little bit uh, for example we can customize our uh, git commit id plugin so let me go to so here i am going to make some customizations here so what we are doing we are specifying only include these properties get what is the branch and so basically if you uh, check our git properties file there is a lot of information there but we may not interested uh, to show all of this information for uh, security reason or whatever so we just want to include only these uh, four properties regarding the git commit information so we can customize this like this so with this let us again run this uh, package goal here actually when we build uh, the artifact this automatically happens but because we are currently running in the ide we need to run this so that it will generate the git properties file 
So now if you take a look at the git properties, it only included the four properties that we want and we configured these four properties only. So this is information is enough we want to uh, show in um, info API endpoint. So with this, let us uh, restart. and take a look at so still it is not showing all that information because by default in our application at properties we haven't configured anything but git info mode is configured to be simple if we uh, make it to full it will show all the properties that are there inside this git properties file so let me restart this now So here you can see uh, all the properties that we refer, uh, added in our git properties here we can see all that information. So you may ask why we want to show these details. Uh, imagine you are uh, working in a project where there are uh, multiple members from different countries are working and uh, you don't know when you are deploying it to some environment you might think you deployed your own version but somebody else makes some changes and deployed their changes also into the common environment and you don't know which version is running and this really helps if you go to this actuator endpoint you see this abbreviation git commit id and you can come back to your repository so this is our code repository right so here you can check okay okay let's go to these commits and you can see this is the commit id that we are uh, seeing in this so you can exactly figure out which version of code is currently deployed so especially if you are working in a distributed environment and you are deploying to a common dev environments this is going coming handy so uh, now we have done this and we have added git commit id plugin and customized it okay so we have done these two parts so now let us uh, add spring doc uh, dependency so right now uh, we don't have swagger documentation uh, support there is a spring doc open api uh, library that helps in uh, creating this swagger documentation very easily so here because we are using a spring web mvc not web flux we can add this dependency and if you are using web flux there is a other dependency that called web flux ui so right now we can add this dependency in our let us uh, close all of them so in the dependencies let me add it here okay and reload now if i restart this application i should be able to see default uh, open api documentation swagger documentation So currently there are no operations defined but we can see that we will be able to access our swagger ui documentation after we added our api endpoints we can come back and we can see how we can use this uh, rest api swagger documentation so it is as simple as simply adding this but later uh, we can see there are a lot of configuration properties if you want to change anything which we, we can change that so let us go back and here we have added uh, this one and rest assured so when we are writing integration tests there are um, various ways we can write integration test we can use uh, test rest template uh, rest assured so personally i like rest assured library so we are going to use uh, rest assured so let me add rest assured testing library here We are not going to write uh, test in this video but uh, let us add this as well so this is also done 
Next, we are going to configure our Spotless Maven plugin. So this Spotless Maven plugin is to automatically uh, format our source code. So basically in the beginning of our careers, we take pride in arguing about whether we should use tabs versus spaces or if we are going with spaces, how many spaces. So that was kind of a fun. But as you get older and older, you don't enjoy that kind of debates very much. You want to just as a team agree upon some formatting and just go with it. Uh, debating on those silly things doesn't uh, entertain you very much as you become experienced. So we are going to use this Spotless Maven plugin and uh, whenever you run any uh, goal like uh, compile or verify, it is going to automatically check whether the code is uh, formatted correctly or not. If it, if it is not, it is going to fail the build or uh, we can also use some goal which automatically formats the source code. So let me add this here so this is the spotless maven plugin we are adding and it gives the flexibility to use different formatters right now i have configured this to use palantir java format which really uh, formats code very well uh, especially if you are using uh, our uh, java 8 features like uh, lambdas and everything uh, there are other uh, options also like you can use google java format so uh, this library feels much better for me and once we added this we can go to our terminal and if we try to build mvn wrapper uh, clean package so it is going to automatically check here the current code is not formatted according to the spotless uh, configuration. So it is also giving the suggestion that you can run spotless apply which automatically formats the source code. So let us run spotless colon apply. So this is going to automatically change the source code. Okay, now we are not inside catalog service. So now let's run this okay so now the code is automatically formatted so we are done with this as well first let us fix one thing uh, in the current code base so if we run uh, we have run our application locally using this class that is fun it is running and if you uh, take a look at this test which is generated by default now let us start the uh, stop the application and run this currently it is going to fail because it will try to run the application uh, but it is required uh, to have database connection but we don't configure anything in our application or properties file so it is going to fail so what we can do we can leverage test containers configuration that is part of this and we can start the integration test. So instead of putting this uh, bin definition here, we can create containers config and move that configuration to this class. So we are going to move this to containers config and we are also going to move this bean definition into this class so now we can change this here now we should be able to run uh, our application locally just like the way we used to and also in our test we can import this and run this so basically we are reusing the same container definition for both local development and testing as well so now you can see the test is passed there is one catch with our uh, spotless maven plugin configuration right now we have configured spotless maven plugin for catalog service so we are able to run that uh, spotless uh, apply or check within the catalog service 
but going forward we are going to add more services and instead of going into each service and then running this one i would be able to run from the root application uh, itself but right now if we go to uh, parent folder and try to run this run the same spotless uh, apply command so here you can see it applied for the child uh, project catalog service but the same plugin configuration is not there in the root project so it is going to fail but actually we don't need uh, to apply it in the root project but uh, it is it is kind of a fail so what we can do we can simply add the same plugin configuration in the uh, parent form as well just to uh, be able to run that uh, from parent project itself I think uh, we don't even need all these specifics but to keep it consistent let's uh, leave it because we are not going to put any uh, code within the root project itself but just to be able to run this uh, formatting and everything right from the root project itself I am adding this plugin. So another option uh, now you can see it is working fine. Another uh, option would be like uh, in our root project. Uh, we put all these plugins and everything and then uh, if we inherit uh, from the root project of our own instead of relying on the uh, Spring Boot parent project we don't need to redefine that. But I would like to keep all this uh, project in a separate way instead of inheriting from this one so that if at any point of time in future if you want to move from uh, catalog service being a, a module within this repository if it wants to move to a separate repository itself it would be loosely coupled so i i personally like this approach where each uh, module if whenever i want to move out of uh, this common uh, mono repo i i will be able to do that without inheriting from the parent one so i like this way just uh, the trade off is even though we are not using uh, this spotless uh, plugin at the parent form level we need to declare this so now we are able to uh, run this uh, spotless uh, code formatting right from the beginning uh, parent project itself. Cool. Next we are going to work on creating Docker Compose file for PostgreSQL. So why do we need that? So currently with the help of test containers we are able to simply run this test catalog service application which is going to take care of uh, automatically spinning up a postgresql container and runs the application we don't even need to configure the database properties here which is going to be automatically uh, configured using service connection support but eventually we are going to uh, build all our application as docker containers and then run entire application uh, as uh, um, as containers using docker compose so there anyway i need to configure all these uh, uh, de uh, dependencies like uh, uh, postgresql rabbitmq and all these other dependencies and currently when test containers spin up this postgresql container by default, it is going to start uh, PostgreSQL container with the 5432 port inside the container, but it is going to map to a randomly available port on the host. So if I want to connect to it, I need to check which port it is mapped on my host and then I need to connect to that. There are ways uh, we can map it to a fixed port using test container desktop, but as I am going to anyway create those Docker Compose files, I should be able to use that uh, for uh, during local development as well. So I'm going to create these uh, Docker Compose files. So here I'm going to create the fold uh, file uh, deployment slash Docker Compose slash infra dot ml. So here I'm going to uh, define this catalog database so here let me make it so we have defined catalog database and we specified the what is the username and password and i mapped it to the uh, 15432 on my host machine and i also defined the health checks so now if i uh, start this postgresql using this configuration and i should be able to connect to it from my application 
for that i need to define uh, database properties here so let me uh, configure these properties so here i am configuring spring data source url to jdbc postgresql localhost and host port 15432 and postgresql and here i am using this environment variables like if you want to override uh, with a different value you can set this environment variable db underscore url which is going to take a higher precedency if you don't define any of these uh, uh, environment variables it is going to take these default values so uh, if you are running in a uh, docker environment you can set these values to point to a different uh, databases so with this configuration now i should be able to start this container defined using uh, infra.ml and then i should be able to run the application by using catalog service application instead of test catalog service application so uh, here i am going into uh, deployment docker compose folder here i can run docker compose minus f because by default it is going to look for docker hyphen compose.ml or compose.ml file but our file name is different so we need to mention minus f infra.ml up and i am running in a detached mode in the background so now once i start the database will be started so let us check that so here I am using a tool called Portainer. Uh, it is kind of a, a GUI tool for Docker containers. Here I can see uh, all the containers running, what are all the images I have. So it is not mandatory, but I uh, really like this tool uh, to check what are the containers running. If I want to clean up some containers, I can do this. So this is a very handy tool here. So I recommend if you want to try it out, try it out. So here we can see the catalog DB is running fine. Now going back to, now I should be able to run uh, application by starting catalog service application itself. Okay, the application is started. Now let me access the actuator endpoint here. So it is working just like the way it was uh, when we are running test catalog service application. So let me know if it confuses you because there are uh, two different ways of running the application. Um, the only reason I am uh, configuring this infra uh, and then uh, be able to run catalog service application is uh, anyway we are going to uh, share some components like a RabbitMQ uh, which is going to be shared by both uh, order service and notification service. We can still make it work using a uh, reusable containers concept but uh, to me it, it is kind of a little bit uh, confusing so i want to be as simple as first you start all the required components for the whole microservice uh, project like we currently define only catalog db in the upcoming videos we are also going to define uh, orders db and rabbit mq and uh, key clock and just start all the required components once and you can run your applications locally by simply running the uh, respective application uh, it, it can be simple so that is the reason we have uh, different ways but at any point of time if you don't want to run multiple services you should be able to simply go and run your application by starting your test catalog or test order service which only starts a subset of uh, components that is required for this particular uh, service and you should be able to run it now we are done with this subtask as well next we want to add github action uh, for our catalog service so what we can do we can define our uh, github action flow under dot github slash work flows slash catalog service dot ml file so here i'm going to define our uh, github actions so basically github actions is a ci uh, system where uh, as soon as you commit your code it can trigger um, the build process and you can define what you want to do with uh, within the build so here instead of putting all the services in one single file i prefer to put it in a separate file and then whenever we change catalog service code then only this pipeline should trigger 
So instead of uh, without uh, that side of that kind of a configuration, if you change something in, let's say, auto service, I don't want to run catalog service pipeline again. I want to run this catalog service only if anything changed within the catalog service only. So that is how I configured it here. So we are giving it a name and then we are specifying whenever we push changes and only if any files changed within this catalog service directory, then only it should get triggered and uh, it, it triggers on any branch. If you want to restrict to a specific branch, we can configure it. For example, you just want to run uh, when code changed or pushed to only main branch, you can specify it. But I want to run uh, this pipeline for every branch. So next we are uh, having multiple uh, build pipeline uh, phases. In the build, we are using Ubuntu based and then we are setting the working directory because our code is not in the root project. Our code, uh, I mean, this pipeline should run within the context of catalog service. So here we are uh, configuring the working directory is inside the catalog service. And we are setting the defaults for this pipeline to the same working directory uh, value, which is same. And here are the actual steps. So the first one is uh, to check out the code. And then uh, we are setting up Java 21 by configuring what is the Java version we want and which distribution. So this is going to take care of uh, setting the Java 21 version for our build. And we are also enabling the cache. So for the first time, it is going to download all the dependencies, which usually takes uh, quite a bit of time for the first time. But then onwards, it is going to cache those dependencies. And only when you change any of your dependencies, it is going to re-download all of them. Otherwise, it is going to reuse the cache. And then finally, we are simply running the verify uh, build, which is going to execute both uh, unit test and uh, integration test. Right now, we don't have any, but uh, we are going to uh, add more in the upcoming videos. So with this pipeline in place, we are able to, uh, we are mostly done. And just to make sure uh, we are not messing it up, let me check one more time. So from our root project, we should be able to run this same command. And one more thing to remember, uh, here uh, we are currently using test containers for running our uh, uh, integration test. There is one, one default uh, integration test, right? But because I have a uh, Docker running on my local, it is working fine. But in the GitHub Actions, by default, uh, these runners already includes uh, uh, Docker running. So it is going to work just fine. So it is, uh, we are able to build locally fine. So now is the time to actually commit all of our code and then look at uh, pipeline execution. So I'm going to commit here catalog service module setup so now we push the code so let us take a look at so Automatically, it picked up the pipeline and it is executing uh, our build. So the pipeline uh, executed successfully and our tests are also be able to run. So we have our initial uh, setup ready right now you can see we are just uh, running the test we are not uh, creating any docker image or anything like that but in our upcoming videos we are also going to build a docker image out of our catalog service and then push it to docker hub so we are going to take care of that in the upcoming videos now we are done with uh, setting up github action for catalog service as well
so we are almost done but uh, there are a couple of things that i would like to improvise so here if you remember like uh, whenever we write code uh, it may not be uh, perfectly formatted and then it is going to fail uh, the build and then again i want to run the command spotless apply to format this and then again i run the test and verify everything is working fine so it's kind of a sometimes we need to do multiple steps before uh, pushing the code so usually i am very lazy to remember all that commands and everything uh, all the syntaxes of those commands so i want to use some kind of a utility that will uh, enable me to do this a little bit simpler way so one of such tool is earlier usually i used to use uh, shell scripts to automate these processes but i kind of uh, find another uh, nice utility called this task so it is a uh, simple utility which you can define various tasks like this and you can run task hello and it will execute all the commands that you mentioned here so you don't need to remember uh, various uh, command syntaxes like this you can simply provide command names uh, easier to remember uh, like here hello task hello and it is going to run all these commands so we are going to use this uh, tool and make it uh, simpler to run various uh, commands so here uh, you can install this uh, in different ways if you are on mac you can simply install it with the brew command or if you are on windows there are uh, different ways so you can follow along this installation guide and then install it so i have installed this tool now i can see task version uh, it is installed this version of the task now how we can use this we can create a task file so let me create this so in our project root directory i am going to create this task file and i have already prepared uh, this i will just walk you through what we are doing in this file so here We are defining some uh, variables that we uh, use across in different commands here. So here we are defining uh, what is the operating system because if it is uh, Linux, we can use MVNW uh, to run any Maven commands. But uh, if you are on Windows, we need to use MVNW.CMD. So for that, I am using uh, defining uh, what is the Go operating system here and I am trying to figure out should I use Maven wrapper uh, this one or this one. So if it is Windows, I am saying use Maven w.cmd file else use Maven wrapper command. And then I am defining where is the Docker Compose files uh, defined. So in this directory, deployment slash Docker Compose. And what is the infrastructure uh, Docker Compose file? Within this folder, there is infra.ml. So I defined all these variables here. Now under the task section, I have defined various tasks. So this is the special default command where if you don't specify any name uh, for a uh, task, it is going to run this default. Here we are uh, triggering test task. So under test task, we have a dependency on the format task and then it is going to run these commands. So under the format commands, we are using mavenw, maven wrapper and spotless apply. So this command is going to apply the spotless formatting. Once it is applied, it is going to run this maven clean verify. So whenever you run task test, it is going to first apply the formatting and then run the test in one command. You don't need to remember all of this. And also there is a build task where it is going to simply uh, run maven verify. Uh, but for uh, build, uh, if you want to run maven install or some other command, you can run this. In addition to that, we have start infra. So we have our uh, infrastructure component uh, defined in uh, infra ML file. So whenever we run start infra command, we run docker compose and we are referencing this infra ML file up minus t detached mode and stop. We want to stop this uh, containers and then remove them here. So restart sometimes we just make some changes and we want to uh, restart so it is kind of a simpler utility first you stop it and then you sleep for uh, let's say five seconds and then start again so it's a simple utility 
So now that we have this task file in place, let us see how our uses uh, would look like. So first, if I don't uh, define any task, if I simply run task, so you can see first it is applying Marvin spotless and then it is running Marvin clean verify. So it is going to run uh, all the uh, uh, test commands. Okay. Now, if I want to uh, start the containers right now, if you take a look at our um, container here, right now it is running. So I'm going to first remove it. So now there is no catalog DB running. So now what I will do, I will use task start infra. So it is starting the uh, infra uh, database here. So it is as simple as that. I don't need to remember um, seeding into that directory and then uh, writing docker compose command. I can rely upon this simple command here. So it is going to start up. So now if I want to stop this, I will simply say stop infra. So whatever all the components that are defined are, are removed now. So it, it is kind of a very uh, simplify our uh, various uh, testing and execution. So simply you don't need to remember all these uh, complex uh, commands and their syntaxes. Instead, you can simply define all of them as uh, commands here and you can simply run task test, task format, task build, task start infra, things like that. So in my opinion, this greatly simplifies uh, uh, your day-to-day -day work and I highly recommend you to try it out but it is not mandatory if you are uh, fine without using this that is absolutely fine but personally I highly recommend you to take a look at it. Now we are done with this task we have done all these subtasks as well so I am going to move it to done and in the upcoming video we are going to implement both get products API and get product by code API endpoints so uh, I hope this video is really helpful we haven't actually implemented the actual API endpoints, but we set up all the uh, groundwork uh, and we are ready to implement our uh, actual logic of our product management. So I hope this is helpful and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.